Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. The device itself is fairly large with measurements of 153.5 by 78.6 by 8.5 millimeters and weighing 176 grams. And I have to admit, considering its size, it's surprisingly light. And you'll notice the texture here at the back, it's actually faux leathering. And because of this, it makes the device a very comfortable hold, despite its large size. I can actually admit that this is the best looking Note device up until today. Although it's not the best looking device in the overall smartphone market, one thing to keep in mind is that this is not dust and water resistant. Starting on the right side of the device, all you have is the power button located at the top. And over at the bottom, you'll actually notice that there's two microphones, which I'll be explaining shortly. You have the micro USB port, which is actually a downgrade from last year. Last year, the Note 3 had a micro USB 3.0 port, whereas this year you have a micro USB 2.0 port. Samsung claims that it's a safe space and a lot of people don't utilize USB 3.0 speeds, which is a little disappointing. And of course, over just onto the right of it, you have the S Pen Stylus socket in which it's kept. And moving over to the left side, you have the volume rocker buttons. And finally, at the top, we have the 3.5mm headphone jack the IR blaster, and of course the third microphone. And the reason for the three microphones is not only to cancel background noise on making a phone call, but also serves special purposes in the sound recording app. For example, you have normal mode, and then of course you have interview mode, which uses the top and bottom microphones to isolate additional noise. Meeting mode distinguishes up to eight voices, in which later you can exclude them from the sound and sound editing. And of course you have voice memo which allows you to dictate audio recording into text. Over on the back we'll start with the amazing 16 megapixel camera which has a flash just below it and it performs stunningly. And what you're seeing now is 4K footage recorded with the Note 4 except for the audio. The audio is from my microphone right now. And this 4K footage has been compressed down to 1080p and it looks absolutely stunning for a smartphone. It actually will surprise you how good it is. Of course, the condition is that you must be in a good lighting situation. And the same can be said about still images. If you're in a good lighting situation, the still image quality is pretty good. Uh, colors themselves look great and the sharpness is there as well. But as you would expect from a smartphone, pictures and videos taken in low lighting conditions are awful. Of course, you have the flash, but it's still pretty bad nonetheless, but nothing surprising. And what you're seeing now is dual screen mode in which I can use the front facing and rear camera at the same time to do dual capturing. And of course it takes pictures at the same time with both cameras. I'm able to shift myself around, make myself bigger or smaller if I wish. And it works very, very fluid and very great. And for this particular part, what you're seeing is footage being recorded in regular speed. Nothing special done here. And this is the same tap, but this time being recorded in 1 8th of the speed. And you'll notice that you can actually see the water droplets easily. It's easy to follow. The slow motion is one of the best ever seen on any phone. The heart rate sensor can be used for special purposes, like for example, to take selfies. You touch the heart rate sensor and then it takes your selfie easily for you. And the primary purpose of the heart rate sensor is to be used in this S Health app, which has a lot of features, but most of them are gimmicky. And this is where you can be able to read your heart rate itself through the heart rate sensor at the back. Continuing with the back under the cover, what we have is the single speaker, the battery itself, the SIM card tray, and of course the micro SD card tray. Now for this particular clip, all audio and video is being taken with the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 front-facing camera, which is a 3.7 megapixel shooter, which is pretty high megapixel count for a front-facing camera. And it's able to record a passive resolution of 1080p. It's able to record in 2560 by 1440, which is Quad HD, which actually matches the resolution of the screen itself, which I'll discuss very shortly. And I noticed that the front-facing camera is pretty respectable uh, in terms of sharpness and clarity, but when recording videos, like most cameras, you don't really get a fatty effect in the face, like other smartphones, but rather you're getting a bit of a warping, which some front-facing cameras have. But it's particularly noticeable more so on this front-facing shooter. Nothing to really complain about, but it is relatively noticeable. Another unique thing about the front-facing camera is not only the heart rate sensor, which makes it very easy to take a selfie, but there's also wide selfies. Think of these as kind of small panoramas which allow you to take wide group shots for selfies and they work pretty well actually. The LED notification light itself is pretty noticeable considering its decent brightness and size. The best part about the front of the device is the 5.7 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1440x2560 and it's a Quad HD screen making it a higher resolution than 1080p. And of course it has 515 ppi with Corning Gorilla Glass 3. So not only is it super sharp, but thanks to the Super AMOLED technology, the colors pop, it's very saturated, look fantastic to screen overall. 
And of course, viewing angles are also superb if you want to have a group of people looking around at your screen. Not only that, because it is super amyloid, again, the screen can get very bright, even on medium brightness. So whether you're looking at pictures or a 1080p video, the screen will look fantastic. This video you're watching right now does the screen no justice. Okay, so at this point what I'm doing is a speaker volume test. There's a Note 4 sitting on my desk, and currently the audio is being recorded through my microphone. But the camera is actually sitting about 20 feet away from the phone. So the phone is on max volume. I'm playing a video for my YouTube channel, uh, the unboxing of the Note 4 itself. You can find a link to it in the video description. And what I'm going to do is shut off the recording from my microphone and switch over to my camera mic so you guys can hear how loud the uh, volume is. So let me stop talking and switch over to the Note 4 speaker. Say whatever you want. Uh, so it does have quad HD screen, so it's better than 1080p. This display is... So considering that the camera is 20 feet away, despite it being a quiet room, 20 feet away, I have to say that the speaker on this device is blaring up the entire room. Uh, it's very surprising considering there's only one speaker and the speaker is on the back of the device. Inside is a whopping 3 gigs of RAM, but you'll notice that a lot of the RAM is being used by core system functions. That doesn't mean the device is slow at all. In fact, the Note 4 places heavy, heavy emphasis on multi-window and multi-functions, which I'll be demonstrating very shortly, and it performs very snappy. There are actually two versions of the Note 4 with different versions of the processor built inside. One version has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 805 Crate 450 quad-core processor clocked at 2.7 GHz with a GPU, which is Andrino 420, whereas the other version has a Exynos 5433 octa-core processor. A quad-core of it is running a Cortex-A53 at 1.3 GHz, and the other quad-core is a Cortex-A57 clocked at 1.9 GHz, and its GPU is a Mali T760. Both perform amazing. Now I had a quick experience using the Qualcomm version, which as you would expect performs splendidly with high graphic Android games, but I'm actually running the Exynos version, and every single video game I played on max graphics like Dead Trigger 2, The Dark Knight Rises, Riptide GP2, Modern Combat 5, you can name it, it doesn't lag at all, it doesn't even seem to struggle in the slightest bit considering how many pixels it has to power. All games were tested on max graphics, the device overall in general, just, you know, day-to-day -day functions even, performs splendid. As you would expect, the 3220mAh battery performs amazing. From 100% down to 15%, I was able to clock 18 hours and 18 minutes. And of that time, the screen was on for 7 hours and 9 minutes, and about half that time was using YouTube, which means the speaker's running, the screen is on, and of course, there's a lot of pressure on the Wi Fi adapter because YouTube uses a lot of bandwidth, so the battery's great. But when it comes to conserving power, you have two power saving options. Regular power saving mode basically restricts background data, it puts it in a grayscale of color and it kind of downgrades performance of the phone itself. Ultra power saving mode takes a step further by limiting how many apps you can actually use. Not only that, it restricts the performance of the phone even more. So you're sacrificing performance, but the battery itself will last even better than it already is. In terms of connectivity, you have Wi-Fi which supports A, B, G, N, and AC connectivity, GPS, Bluetooth, an NFC chip, DLNA, mirror casting, and of course you also have LTE. And you also have the option to combine LTE and Wi-Fi speeds in a function called Download Booster, which you can use those combined speeds to download files that are 30 megabytes in size or bigger off the internet. In addition to connectivity, you also have an IR blaster, which means you can use the device as a remote control for your TV or various home theater devices. Now when it comes to internal storage, the previous Note devices had different options available. For some bizarre reason, the Note 4 only comes in 32 gigs of internal storage, which is a bit of a disappointment. However, they still support micro SD card slot for external storage of 128 gigs max. Out of the box, you're getting Android 4.4.4 with the usual Samsung TouchWiz skin overlay. And I have to say that this is so far the cleanest version of TouchWiz, which is actually a good thing. It's a little bit more minimalistic. However, like other Samsung devices, it suffers from the problem that the system settings menu is a giant cluttered mess. For example, I was trying to find where the battery stats are, but it took me forever until I realized it's actually under power saving. This is where the battery stats is listed. And I found this very bizarre because it should be listed as battery and power saving. I find that power saving is secondary to the actual battery stats itself. Now there is a search function built inside to counteract this issue, uh, which actually allows you to search the system settings menu, and this feature is actually being included in stock Android L, so Samsung was actually able to beat Google to the punch. And this is only the beginning of the exclusive Samsung features that you would expect from a prime Samsung device. 
For example, there's heavy emphasis on multi-window more than ever. When looking through the recent apps, you have this special icon at the top which allows you to activate multi-window right off the bat. And of course, you have a bunch of other options available when this circle appears. For example, you can allow floating icons which you can drag around and it's always present no matter where you are in the device itself. Of course, you can always go back to full screen mode. You can press and hold the back button from anywhere to activate the regular multi-window function, which people should be used to. And of course, multi-window itself performs snappier than ever. It's very responsive and it performs great. You also have the ability to increase screen sensitivity so you can use a glove while using the screen. A fingerprint scanner which allows for additional security on the lock screen and other various features within the phone. The S Pen Stylus has the usual functions like hovering over a link or a gallery image to get a preview of it. Within certain apps, you also have the ability to press and hold the S Pen Stylus button and drag. Almost similar like a window selection which you click and drag and highlight a whole bunch of objects at the same time. And believe it or not, Samsung was actually able to include more options for the S Pen stylus and responsiveness than ever before. You also have the ability to take pictures of text, exclude everything in the picture you took, and only play around with the text alone. You'll notice that the black background has disappeared. Smart Select from the stylus S Pen allows you to select certain parts of the screen as a screen capture and add it to a collection. From within this collection, you have the option to edit the pictures as you wish. And you can always go ahead and have the option to expand your collected objects and send them as individual attachments to a text message or for an MMS message rather or an email attachment or you can send a whole bunch of them together. The gallery app has plenty of functions built inside for photo editing but it doesn't actually just get limited to just this. There's an option called Studio which basically allows you to have additional photo and video editing functions. You might not need a third party app from Google Play. Even the camera app has a ridiculous amount of options built inside. But it's actually very easy to use, don't get uh, intimidated by that menu. But if you ever need more options, you have the ability to download more. Now it's no secret that the Note 4 is one of the most future packed devices on the smartphone market right now. But as mentioned, there are some problems like the system settings menu being a mess. This S Finder and Quick Connect and Brightness adjustment takes up half the notification space. You can't actually remove any of that, unfortunately. Now when it comes to making phone calls, you will look pretty funny using this device to make phone calls because it's so big. But overall, phone call quality is okay. Nothing special, nothing bad, just okay. The Note 4 is an incredible device that does a lot of things. In fact, there's something I just couldn't mention in this video because I can't fit it. For example, if you use the charging wire out of the box, it enables this feature called Quick Charge, which basically recharges about 40% of the battery in half an hour, which is faster than average, but not the best, but still pretty good. So there's a lot of other things I couldn't fit in this video because this phone does a crazy amount of things. I have to put it in another video. I'll put a link to that software tips and tricks video in the video description. Overall, I have to give the Note 4 a 8.5 out of a 10. It has a lot of things going for it. I know people are expecting a bit higher of a score, but there's a few things that are a bit of annoyance. The system settings menu is a big mess still. It's a lot cleaner than previous TouchWiz versions, but it's still a bit of a mess. Unfortunately, we had to go from USB 3.0 in the Note 3 down to USB 2.0 now with the Note 4. This Note version is only available in 32 gigs of internal storage, whereas previous versions were available in say 32 gigs, even 64 gigs of internal storage options. About a third of the screen is taken over by a lot of junk in the notification bar. It's really annoying. You can't remove most of it, so it's a bit of a disappointment there. But overall, the device has a lot going for it that's really good. That's why the score still remains pretty high. For example, the 60 megapixel camera is still one of the best on a smartphone I ever used. The screen is Quad HD. It has a higher resolution than 1080p screens, so you're getting stunning picture clarity. Considering its size, I have to admit it's relatively comfortable and light. So overall, it's not perfect. It has some flaws that I had to mention, but on a personal note, this is just my opinion alone, like as the editor of this video. This is so far my favorite device. So Note 4 is definitely worth checking out. It's a great device. I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to check out like camera sample videos, software tips and tricks, a whole bunch of other videos. You can find them in the video description. And if you guys found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter links also in the video description. Hit the like button. It does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.